Hello, I'm Paul here. Today I'm going to be talking about uh, a method to where you can actually slowly increase your Forex account over time. Uh, uh, now, before I begin, the information in this video is not financial advice. It's for entertainment purposes only. So the information, uh, the inf information in this video, I'm not responsible for any profit or loss. Uh, but I want to go over a method that, you know, it took me a little while to learn how, um, uh, and I'm, it, it's with Forex and that I'm glad I came to Forex because when I first came to Forex, it introduced me to all these Forex pairs, but then, then I kind of learned, uh, a strategy that, you know, you could blow up your Forex account by doing a particular method and it's... Uh, it's the S&P 500 and focusing on the S&P 500 and uh, I started trading the S&P 500 on Robinhood and the goal here is to at least this this is my opinion it's to it's to trade the S&P 500 on a, a Forex account so when you're doing it on Robinhood you're focused on the ticker spy when you're focused on uh, doing it with Forex you're focused on uh, you're focused on SPX. So there's pros and cons to both. Uh, I started with Robinhood, but I I think that doing it with Forex is the better better approach right now. I can go to a, a, a compare and contrast right now, but I, right now I kind of want to teach the average person how to take a small little bit of uh, capital and blow it up over time. So with the strategy, you're you're going to be starting with a penny or one lot. You need to uh, you need to get, uh, grow your own. Now, what I would personally do first is I would get a demo account and I'd practice first. I wouldn't do this. I wouldn't do this for real until I practiced a little bit with it. But it, once you're comfortable, uh, uh, then you can start doing it. But the reason. I choose to do it on Forex over Robinhood is because uh, it's very easy. You don't have to deal with those contracts, and it's much easier, in my opinion, because uh, the S uh, the S&P 500, if you look at the charts, and we'll look at the charts, but it's very easy to understand the overall direction of it. Uh, if, you, if you want to imagine yourself on a track field and you're running and you're running, and eventually you'll get out of breath and you have to stop for a little while until you pick up some steam and then you resume again. That's kind of how you attack the S&P 500. Uh, when you know the overall direction, uh, it, became, it becomes a little bit easier. Now, what I personally do here is I stay away from CPI data days. So you got to look up that. You got to look up when those dates are. I stay away from those days because the market usually goes crazy. Uh, and then some other specific days, you know, holidays, you can't do it. But other than that, I put, put the focus. Now, the the secret here to this strategy and what has been working well for me is focusing on the four hour. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to show you the method that I do to trade the S&P 500. But first, I'm going to show you how to set it up to where you can do it on Forex. And then I'll walk you guys through some strategy. Okay, so to trade, to trade uh, the SPX on Forex, you need two two different things. You, well, you need three actually. You're gonna need trading view so you can look at charts. You're gonna need trade locker so you can trade it when the market's open, and you need a broker to attach to trade locker so you can trade with. So the broker that I use is this one here. It's called Osprey FX. I'll put a link below in my pinned comments if you guys want to get this broker. Uh, but anyway, what you want to do is you want to go to accounts and you want to set up an account and you want to, you know, I recommend doing demo first. Now, if you do demo, if you do demo, it's going to be the same thing except it's just not real money. So, you hit demo, they'll give you an account, login and all that, and you can practice. You can practice what I'm saying in this video, and you can do it without putting actually any real money in it first. See the results first for yourself, and then you can actually put some real money in it. But 
once you once you feel confident in it you can then create your own account you go here to the top option up here now you see right here i have a btc balance and a usd bounce to focus on doing uh to focus on blowing up a forex account what i would suggest the average person do is focus on the usd account you want to start by blowing up a forex account and i would i would suggest doing that with a usd account there are methods to do it with bitcoin personally i do that for you know trading bitcoin itself and the halving and the dumps and doing all that there there's a separate video for that and i've talked about it but if you want to blow up a forex account i, I would suggest i would suggest doing it with usd so that when you're trading the s p 500 your gains will be in usd it's much easier to kind of see uh, your progress when you're getting gains in satoshi you're it's kind of confusing to figure out how much you you've actually made so i would i would focus putting it uh putting it into a separate uh you know a usd based account and you can slowly grow it over time so this is the method to do it to trading um to trading with forex now the the goal of this strategy here and we're going to go look at uh, trade locker here once you create your account they're going to email you a password and you can see right here it's right here i got a couple trades i'm doing bitcoin and you know i think it's going to go down and i got a uh, canadian that i'm doing here down a little bit but i think it's going to bounce back but that that's not the point uh, the point here is once you set up, you need to get in the, what I would suggest people do is set it up to where you can trade the SPX. And you go here, you go to your, because the market's not open yet, you want to go to US shares and you want to go to SPX, wherever it is. Okay, so it's not on US shares, so let's go to all, and you just put in SPX, you'll find it. Okay, so this is SBX. You want to focus on the one on the bottom here. So you can't put any orders in right now. The market's not open yet. But basically, this is what you do. And, you know, based off your balance, that is how much of a lot size you can do. So personally, my goal is to get this to a dollar, which is probably going to be happening pretty soon because I'm going to be putting more into this. But if you get this to one lot size here, Let's just get there. So if you got this to a $1 lot size, that's almost like trading it on Robinhood. Yeah, and we'll, we'll, we'll look at the charts and I'll show you. But basically my goal, first, my, big, my first big goal is to get this at a dollar. But right now what I'm, my, when I do trade it, I'm doing it at the lowest amount that it, that it has. And that is at the lowest amount to start with, which is one penny. And this is what I would suggest the average person do is once you feel comfortable, start it at a penny and work your way up. So now that you know how to set it up, let's kind of look at the chart. So when you're trading the S&P 500, the ticker here, and you, you need trading view for this. So uh, you go to SBX here. Now, what I personally do is I focus on the four-hour chart. And I also have a paid indicator down here at the bottom called Trade Sniper. And I you know I've made videos about it. I'm not really going to go into it right now. But Trade Sniper is basically MACD. So if you don't want if you don't want Trade Sniper, which is a paid indicator, and I customize it too. So if you don't want Trade Sniper, just go to your MACD. MACD right here and basically you would just change some settings you would go here and remove the uh, the signal i keep the zero line but you want to keep you want to keep the uh you want to keep the histogram and you basically would change just change the colors accordingly and you no know, i choose to have it i don't i don't want to waste time on that but basically i base it off of the four hour chart and 
what I basically do is I put my 9, 90, and 95. I'll load up here with the CM. There it is. That. It's called the CM EMA trim bars. I click that three times and then I'll put 9, 90, 95. What this does is it color codes the lines so you, you have a better understanding of what direction it's going. Now since I base this off of the four hour, I have, the first thing I ask myself is, I, what's the overall trend? What is the S&P 500 doing? What is, what is the overall direction of the four hour? What direction is it going? It's going up. We can clearly see that it is going up. So we know when to enter a trade, when to focus on it. So, so remember what I said earlier about how you're running on a track field, where you run on a track field, eventually you, you run out. Well, that happens here. You, you know, you, you start, let's see, let's, you start running and running and running and running and then you get tired and then you take a break for a little bit and then you start running again, running again, you get a little bit tired and then it starts running again, gets tired, 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 and it's kind of the pattern of the SP500. So. What you do, and at least this is my opinion, is you come in when it takes its breather, when it's when it's resting. And you can see that with the trade sniper here. So what do you focus on when you're trading on the four hour with the SP500? You want to get in when you're... Now, if you're getting trade sniper, it's first it's going to look like this when you first get it. And you could use it that way, but I prefer doing it with columns because it, it's easier to see. So I switch it up to columns, That's but that's personal preference. But I personally like it better looking in like this. So when when you're focused on trading the S&P 500, the, uh, when you're doing it on Forex, there's a lot of pros that come to this, doing it on Forex versus doing it on Robinhood. Uh, but I'll get to that at the end of this video. But basically, when you want to enter is you know on the four hour, you know where the overall direction is going. The overall direction is going up. So you want to focus when your trade sniper or your MACD or your MACD are in the upper part of the zero line. That's when you enter on the four hour. So you could get in. So if you got in at the SPY right here, not SPY, but the SP 500. You got in right here or right here. Any one of these is good. So if you came in here, let's zoom in real quick. Let's look at a couple here. And let's just say you started off with a 0 .01 lot size on your Forex. And this is what I would just suggest the average person do. So you come in right here. You see that it's up. And you ride it up. So if you're doing it on forex, you don't have to worry about expiration, which is you could you could ride these out for longer. So let's just do a week, just so for you know Robinhood purposes. But this is a one hundred and thirteen thousand. What's that one? No, it's a, it's an, it's eleven thousand three hundred and seventy-five pip move. So this is a. 11,375 pip move. If you did that at 0 0.01, you would have made $113. You would have you would have taken one penny and made $113 off of it. This is off of the bare amount uh, of doing your trades with forex. You made a hundred. You turned a cent into $113. So. You blew up with, with just this small little move. You blew up and you gave yourself another $113. But let's look at a couple of other scenarios. We know the trend is going up. We know the trend is going up, so we would come in right about here. We don't have to worry about expiration, so we can just ride this out for as long as we want. And this is 11 days. So this run right here is about 11 days, but I'll just do it. 
No, I don't want to do a week because that's if you're doing Robin Hood. This is not on Robin Hood. So this is a this is another 17 17 203. We got a 17 203. Times that book by the minimum and you made $172. So you took a penny and you made $172. So you can kind of get where I'm saying you, you start small, you start with a penny, and as your capital grows by doing trades, now focus with the S&P 500 because you, overall you guys know what direction it's going. Let's just look at a, you, do, you don't focus on going against the trend, and going against the trend would be doing, would be doing a sell order on a uptrend, and this right here would be going against the trend. With my strategy, I only focus on, you know, focus on it going up because that's what the trend is doing. You want to go with the trend. So anyway, let's do this one real quick. You see it right here with the Trade Sniper or the MACD. This is probably just going to be a small one. But here to here is a 2,914 move here, pip move. 2914 times the minimum one cent. You made $29 with that move. That was a small one. They're not all going to be big moves. But we see it. We see it happen right here. Again, trend is going up. Ride this out to here to here. This is a 15,041 pip move. You know, 15,041 times the bare minimum. $150. So now that I showed you guys doing it with the bare minimum, uh, what happens when you grow your account and you could you could slowly scale up? You know, you'd start, you start at a penny and let's just say you had enough and you had enough confidence to do it at 10 cents. So let's go look at 10 cents. Let's say you scaled up your account. Let's try this with 10 cents. Let's see. This is when it started going up, so we would actually get in maybe right here. But you may not base this off of, you may not come in here because you, at this point, you may not know the trend is up at this point. So you may probably get in right about maybe here. Probably this would probably be where the most people probably would get in. You'd base it off of this one right here. So if you got in right here to here. This is one, it's 15,539. So uh, 15, 539 times 10 cents. You scaled up your account and this is turned into $1,553. So you can slowly, slowly start scaling. And this is why I focus on trading. You know, when you're dealing with Forex, I just, I just focused on SPX. Now this is a very easy scalable strategy. Once you get the hang of it, uh, if you trade on the four hour, you identify the overall trend and you can slowly scale, you know, if you're not doing it on Robinhood, you're doing it on a Forex account. You start small with one watt size and with a USD based balance and you grow it over time Eventually, you can get to doing it at a dollar. Uh, basically, the, the numbers that we were seeing, you know, the 15,000 uh, pip move, The if you did it at a dollar, you would be, be making 15,000 per trade. So you can really scale this up really quickly. Um, but what I would suggest people do is practice on a demo account first. Uh, to me, it seems easier doing this on Forex versus doing it with Robinhood because Robinhood you have to uh, you have to buy contracts which expire doing it with this way doing it this way you, you can hold it for as long as you want and you know enter 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 when you want and exit when you want and you can slowly scale it up with a USD based balance this is how you blow up a forex account you don't focus on the forex pairs you know japan and all that you focus on the s p 500 because 
The S&P 500 is very, it's very easy to identify the direction when you look at the charts. Now, if you want to follow the chart that I use, uh, the CMA trend bars, that's $9.90.95. And if you want to get Trade Sniper, it's a paid indicator. I'll put the link below. Other than that, you can use MACD to kind of, it's similar. It's similar to it, and you can still see the, the signals on a four hour. But anyway, I use this strategy to kind of blow up my Forex account. You can also use this strategy to kind of help you with prop firm challenges. Uh, I think uh, trading the S&P 500 is the easiest route to go to passing prop firm challenges and to actually scaling up a Forex account. But anyway, like I said at the beginning of this video, this is for an inter entertainment purposes only. This is not financial advice. Do your own research on this. Uh, I got th to this point by just researching and finding different formulas. So this is what works for me. It may not work for other people, but I thought I would share it with everybody else. But anyway, if you guys liked the video, make sure you hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. See you guys in future videos.